see you all today as we gather on this day that the Lord has given us. And uh, as we gather, we welcome people amongst us and among our visitors, uh, Carol and Rob, and over here, and Noel and David over here, and Rosalind, who's not really a visitor, but uh, has come with her parents today. And there may be others amongst us who are here for the first time uh, or visiting, and we welcome you uh, to our worship today. Let us come before God, let us pray. Loving God, we gather today in your name to become your church. We come from different circumstances and different situations, but we come to give you the praise, to hear your word, to sing together of your great love for us. For Lord, still every voice in us but your voice, quieten every emotion but that which leads us closer to your love and deeper in your friendship. O Lord, we come in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to worship and to serve you. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we sing, To God be the glory, great things he has done. If you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing.
works for them. And I found some that they really, really liked. Really, really liked. But of course they didn't know it was their birthday present. They didn't know that we were going to buy them. So I had to actually take them off these two bikes and take them home without buying the bikes. They didn't know that my mum was actually buying the bikes for them. But she stayed behind to do that. So I had to take these two boys off these two bikes that they really, really wanted and go home. And they let me know that they were not happy. <laughs> they kicked, they screamed, they struggled. And I had to take them home. I, went, I walked through this shopping centre with these two little 18 month old boys, 20 months, whatever. Kicking, struggling, screaming. I have never been so embarrassed in my entire life. I had to push them into the car. I had to push them into their car seats. When we got home, my mum had some biscuits for them and they shut up immediately. But, yes. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen that happen at a shopping centre? Have you ever seen a child who really, really wants something and they really, really letting their parents know that that's what they're doing? That's what they want. Mum, mum, I want that chocolate. Mum, I want, oh, look at that. Oh, mummy, I really want that little dress. Mummy, can I have that dress? Mummy, please, 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 can I have that dress? And they just keep going. And they keep going. And they keep going. And sometimes you see that the parents will actually give in. And they go, okay, all right, enough. Enough, I've had enough. You are driving me nuts. You can have the dress. You can have the chocolate, you can have whatever you like, just be quiet. You ever seen that happen? Do you think that's a good thing? That the parents give in? No, probably not. No, probably not. Well, there's a story in the Bible about somebody who actually does a similar sort of a thing. It's about uh, a judge. That, you know what a judge is? Yeah, somebody who um, helps to um, settle disputes um, and it's about this lady who came to this judge but he wouldn't give her what she wanted. But you know what she did? Instead of giving up, she just kept coming to him quietly but coming to him again and again and again and again and eventually he said, look, this lady is driving me nuts. She's absolutely driving me crazy. I am going to give her what she wants. Now, some <coughs> stories in the Bible tell us about what God is like. Some stories in the Bible tell us about what God is not like. Now, when we come to God and we ask him for something, do you think he's going to give it to us straight away, just whatever? Yeah, no, not really. Sometimes <coughs> we need to come again and again and again. But do you think that God gives us things just because we're driving him crazy? No, no. What we know about God is that he is a loving and patient and kind and good God and he will always hear our prayers, always listens and always gives us the good things. Now sometimes it means that we need to wait. Sometimes it means that we need to be like that lady in the Bible who just keeps coming and coming and saying, Lord, I really would like this good thing. I think it's a good thing. But I'm coming to you and I'm saying, Lord, over to you. If you think it's good, then I'm going to wait until the right time for you to give it to me. So that story that Jesus told us is to say that we should never give up praying. If you believe that what you're asking God for is a good thing, and you're trusting that God will give you that good thing, just keep praying. Never give up. Okay? Now I've got a little craft activity for you down the back there and some little puzzles that if you'd like to do them and um, Vicky's going to help you out with that.
But before we do that, let's have a little prayer. Father, we thank you that you are a good and loving and kind and wise God, and that you will always, always answer our prayers and always give us what is good for us. Lord, give us patience and persistence when we come to you. Help us to remember that you are our trustworthy God and you will always hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. That's, uh, you should have received a copy of the weekly scroll um, as you enter the church, or some of you would have received it by email, and if you don't and you'd like to, make sure you let us have your email address. The scroll is here. And uh, you'll notice that an upcoming event which is focusing our attention at the moment is the Village Craft Fair. And uh, this, uh, this large sheet of paper uh, has on it all the, the activities that we do and the various um, time slots that people can volunteer. And uh, as the scroll says, there's fun tasks for everyone. So uh, if you want to be involved, we'd love you to be involved uh, on these various stalls and in other ways. And you'll see there's gaps there. So um, we ask this will be at the back of the church and we have a morning tea afterwards. So please, um, it'd be great if you could, could um, put your name on there if it's not already there. And the other things are, are that uh, we're looking for uh, cash donations for to help the people that make cakes and slices and so on for sale and for the uh, the cafe. And Vicky's holding up the back there uh, the uh, the the uh, little box that the money can go in. And we've got these flyers that have been produced in multiple copies. So it'd be great if you could take some of these and hand to your your friends, your neighbours, stick in letter boxes nearby um, to encourage people uh, to come along to the craft fair. So uh, are there any? Yes, there is. There's another very important announcement. That is the fellowship meeting this coming week, and so it's at the home of uh, Sue Kurtz. So. Uh, there's a little leaflet available. The address is also in the scroll, but um, there's a little, it's even got a little map as to how to get there. So you've got to come here first, and then from here you'll find your way to Sue's place. So uh, it's 9.30 to 11.30 on, uh, on Thursday, making a lumberjack cake. Yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, well, now. Yeah. Everybody will be there. It's coming Thursday. Any other announcements that we need to make today that are on board? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's come to God in prayer. Let us confess our sin. Let us pray. Examine hearts and minds before God and acknowledge where we have lost our direction or sold ourselves short. Let us pray. Maybe we have been too busy to notice things beautiful and good, or too preoccupied to say thank you or I love you. Lord, have mercy. Maybe we have been too stubborn to apologise for our mistakes, too proud to do inconspicuous tasks, or too independent to let others help us. Christ have mercy. Maybe we have been too self-demanding to enjoy a task well done, though not perfectly, or too proudly humble or gracefully to gracefully accept thanks from a colleague. Lord, have mercy. Personal God, Saviour and Friend, forgive us for our obsessive busyness, for our pride and for our overdone humility. 
Forgive us for hurts we have inflicted on others and for the love we have denied them and ourselves. By the grace of God, restore us to the joy of salvation. In his name. Amen. My friends, God is neither too busy nor too proud nor too humble to say, I love you. In Jesus, he has declared himself forever. His love and mercy are over all his works. You shall know me from the least to the greatest. I will forgive your evil and remember your sin no more. How sweet are your words to me, loving God, much sweeter than honey in my mouth. Amen. And let us have our offering prayer. Loving God, you give us so much, and in return we offer ourselves and our physical resources. Take this money that's placed in the offering bag, or through FPOS, or by direct transfer. May it be used to your glory in this place and beyond. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, amen. As Deanne said with the girls and boys, uh, we're talking about prayer today, about how God hears our prayers and answers. And so, one of the favourite, when I was an aged kid, one of our, as a chaplain, one of our favourite hymns was What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. Is that the favourite hymn? Oh, how about we sing it? Stand if you're able as we sing. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to him.
A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust, unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Nair. Let us pray. Loving God, as we reflect on that scripture reading, Guide my speaking, guide our thinking, that your Holy Spirit may speak to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today we're thinking about prayer. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. I wonder how many of us are truly happy with our prayer life. Many think, how many think, I haven't got time to pray, or I'd like to have more time to pray. How many of us find our prayer dull or boring, or we never seem to get answers? We pray and pray and pray, but nothing seems to change. How many of us find it hard to concentrate? Our minds wander. We can't focus attention and keep on track. How many of us are happy to skip through the Lord's Prayer, make a bit of a circle around our family and those who are in need, and call it quits? Amen. How narrow is our prayer? How selfish is our prayer? How much prayer is focused on me? Do you find prayer confusing? What about apparently unanswered prayer? There was a tavern that was being built in a town that had previously been dry. In opposition to the tavern, a group of Christians began an all-night prayer meeting and asked God to intervene. Lightning struck the tavern and it burnt to the ground. The owner then brought a lawsuit against the church, holding them responsible. The Christians hired a lawyer and denied responsibility. In response to this unusual scenario, the judge said, no matter how, how this case comes out, one thing is clear. The tavern owner believes in prayer and the Christians do not. I think if we are honest, there are a few of us, there are very few of us who can't do with some help in prayer. Pray always and never lose heart. Then Jesus told a peculiar story, the unjust judge. A woman, and no, it's not just any woman, she is a widow. As such, she was at the bottom of a social heap. As Alfred Plummer wrote, she had neither a protector to coerce nor money to bribe the unjust magistrate. We're not told what her complaint was. With very few rights, she probably had little to take to law. Perhaps she was one of the widows Jesus was referring to a couple of chapters on in Luke where he told people to look out for the teachers of the law who, among other things, take advantage.
percentage of widows and rob them of their homes. Whatever the circumstances, she clearly had a just claim. It was just that she came upon a judge who cared nothing for God or people. He neither, as the Bible says, feared God nor respect, had respect for people. Even without a man to push her case or money to bribe the judge, she persisted and pestered, harassed and bothered the judge until finally, in desperation, he gave her what she wanted. Now, Jesus did not tell the story to say that is what God is like, an unjust judge. But if you keep up long enough, if you pester and bother and persist long enough, then you will get what you want. Now Jesus, in this story, was contra contrasting the unjust judge with God. Even if a mongrel judge like this one will eventually give you what you want, if only to get rid of you, how much more is God likely to answer your prayers? Now this story is about more than just prayer. And sometimes I... I don't like that phrase, uh, just pray. Uh, sometimes you hear the word, Lord, I just pray. I just pray. We don't just pray. And that is the point of this story. We don't just pray. We pray for justice. And that's what the widow was about. She was praying for justice. For herself and possibly for her children, although we're not told. Let's read on in the New Revised Standard Version and the NIV is similar in verses 6 and 7. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? on earth. This is about justice for the chosen ones, the elect, who are for Jesus, the people of Israel, who have struggled for centuries against the injustices of surrounding powers, the latest of which was the Roman Empire. And as commentator Bill Loder says, it is a political yearning, but much bigger than that. It is the cry for justice, for peace, for the establishment of God's rule in the world. It's the cry, your kingdom come. And he goes on, it is the yearning encouraged by the promise, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the hungry, for they shall be satisfied. So it is missing the mark if we treat the passage as a general teaching about intercessory prayer. It is primarily about the yearning for change. And he continues, it was very appropriate that the story told of a poor widow. She represents a behaviour, she has, but she also represents the poverty and vulnerability, which is the point of the parable's message. The story has been shaped in the cruelty of exploitation and the arbitrary abuse of power. It belongs in the world which Jesus is addressing. Jesus is reading the signs in the wounds of the people. The contours of their devastation shape the structures of his thought, because this is where he belongs, and these are the people whose cries he hears. That's Bill Lowe. How often in our prayers do we pray for justice? Not just for ourselves or those we love, but justice for the poor of the world. We pray for justice, and that doesn't mean just us. We pray for the world. In this passage, it's the last verse that disturbs me. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Son of Man is a phrase Jesus used of himself. Will I find faith on earth when I come? If Jesus were to return tomorrow, what would he find? Faith? I mean, this week there are several global days. Today is World Food Day. Tomorrow is the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. 
The 18th of October, the day after, is the EU Anti-Trafficking Day. He'd find a world where many species created by God have become extinct, where a lot of people are now realising that we have to do something about the destruction of the planet, especially climate change, and yet governments so often seem reluctant to act against the big polluters. He'd find a world where we can find enough money to buy nuclear-powered submarines, but not enough to address the starving poverty stricken war damaged people from places like Somalia, Ethiopia and other places. We find a world where some voices are crying for justice. In 2005, Christopher Reeve died at the age of 52. Christopher Reeve had it all. Handsome, good looks, wonderful physique and fame from his many movie roles and the most famous of which was in the four Superman movies. You might remember him. Then in 1995, Christopher Reeve broke his neck in a riding accident and became a quadriplegic. Using his wealth and position, Christopher Reeve successfully lobbied for increasing funds to be given for research and for justice for himself and for other severely disabled people. His plan was to one day walk again. He put the needs of disabled people on the world agenda in a way that few other people could or had. Rather than curl up and say, poor me, he travelled the world as an advocate for disabled people. Christopher Reeve. Had he remained fit and healthy and strong, that would never have happened. Then Jesus told them a parable about their needs to pray always and not to lose heart. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith <coughs> on earth? Amen. And we're going to sing, now we're going to sing a song, a hymn, that um, is probably new to us. Lord, hear my praying. Listen to me, and I'm going to ask the end to uh, guide us through that as we as we commit this thing. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to me. When we talk about what um, songs and hymns and things that we're going to do when we're planning a service, um, sometimes. When we uh, choose songs, we were, we were actually putting words into your mouths. And these, these words are quite challenging, so be warned. This, is, this song is actually called The Sorrowing Song. So, yeah, just t take notice of the words as you sing them. Um, because th this is a song about people crying out for justice. You know, I'm going to play the song through just the first verse. I'll sing it for you and then we'll go back and we'll sing it all together. This is the sorrow of the song.
challenging and challenging, cha uh, challenging words from Australian uh, in writer Robin Mann. So we're going to give praying for others a go now. Uh, George MacDonald, Gordon MacDonald, I mean, said, Daily disciplined prayer it is one of the most difficult exercises Christians undertake. So let's give it a try anyway. Today we're in our prayer, but rather than me to say a lot of words and, uh, and maybe a few of us make uh, suggestions as to the people we might pray for, what, what we're going to do is, uh, I see prayer as an intercessory prayer. What helps me is to imagine a bit like a stone thrown into a pond. I've mentioned this here before. A stone thrown into a pond and the ripples go out. And so in prayer we start with ourselves. We, we can't start anywhere else because that's where we are. We start with ourselves and our approach to prayer and our attitude to prayer. And then we move out in, in circles, uh, spreading out emotionally, geographically, um, genealogically, if you like, from family members and so on, as we, as we think of other people. So that's how we're going to suggest we structure our prayer today. And there'll be time, if, uh, if you wish to, to, uh, to call out names that, that might be on your heart and mind, because that's important as we share, share people in prayer. And then we're going to finish with a prayer, which um, where is it? Yeah, a, a tear fund prayer. Today is World Food Day, and uh, the 16th of October, World Food Day. And I don't know about you, but uh, I had breakfast this morning, and I expect to have lunch, and probably something for tea tonight. Whereas, as we know, there are many people in this world for whom one meal a day would be a luxury, and a nutritious meal would be an extra luxury. So let's, let's uh, still ourselves before God, and imagine that stone that goes into the pond, the ripples going out, as we start with ourselves, let us pray for ourselves, the church, and the world. Let's pray. Loving God, our Father, here we are, sitting in this building today, thinking about the unjust judge and how your love is so great in seeking justice for this world. Lord, here we are, each with our own situation, things on our own minds, things that are concerning us. Maybe our health is not so good. Maybe we're just bursting with joy. Lord, here we are, sitting before you, seeking your help and thanking you for the answers that you give us to our prayers. But Lord, as we move out from ourselves, we think of the people in the building near us. There's people sitting beside us, in front of us, behind us. People here gathered sometimes uh, frequently, sometimes occasionally. And as we think of each other, we think of people who may not be here today. People who are away on holidays, or people who are not here because they're unwell, or because the crisis has overtaken their lives. We think of those people. And as we do, we think of the life of this congregation, and all that goes on in this place, and the plans for events like the fellowship group this coming week, uh, and the craft fair uh, in a couple of weeks' time, thinking about all these things. And we think, as the ripples move out, we think of those we live near, our neighbours, people in the house next door, or over the road, or the unit above, or below, or beside us, people that we sometimes might see and sometimes we want to, and others that we know quite well, and form a little community together. 
We think of our neighbours, those who live near us and those beyond in uh, this region of the planet. We think of those people. And we think of uh, relationships, the people who are close to us emotionally and by means of birth, who may not be close to us physically, but live at a distance. We hold them before you, Lord, that their day may be profitable, that they may know your love, and that they may find answers to the struggles that they may have, or that we might share the joys that they have. We pray for our relationships with people, family members, near and far. And as we do, we give thanks for those family members who have gone beyond this earth, who are giving praise to you in the eternal kingdom. And though we pray beyond our own families and beyond our own neighbourhood to this world in which we live, we pray for those in other parts of this country who are suffering severe flooding at the moment, we pray that uh, there will be resources to help them and that people might have clear and level heads as they endure yet more flooding in this land. And going beyond, we know that there are troubles in places in this world. We think of those people in places like Ukraine and Russia in China with their big meeting today about their leadership. We think of those other nations nearby in the Pacific and in Asia where people sometimes struggle to have the right things done. We thank you Lord for our own country and our leaders and government in this state and across the nation. We might lose all the times but we know that we are so well off and uh, that uh, our laws keep us safe and ensure our good health through hospitals, education, teaches us the good things of this world. And Lord, as we think about the world, we think about the way we treat this planet, knowing that there are actions that need to change and yet sometimes we seem reluctant. We think about this planet now and for the future. And Lord, we pause now in our prayers to think of people who we want to name before you, either out loud or in the silence of this moment. People that we would, we would ask your special love and care, people in particular need. And if you wish to call out a name, I invite you to call out fairly loudly so that we, as, as well as God, can all hear. Lord, we know that you hear these prayers. And we pray now on World Food Day in words, words supplied by Tia Fund. We pray for those in summarising the prayer that they've provided. We know the, the limitations facing supply chains and harvests do not limit you. Lord, please work beyond the disputations or the disruptions, blockages and adverse conditions that make a way for supplies to reach those who desperately need them. We pray for those who rely on farming to feed their families and earn an income. Lord, please bring to an end violence and establish real lasting peace. Protect those who are working for peace at local, national and regional levels. And Jesus, we know that your compassion moves to respond to the needs of the broken, hurting,